Well, howdy folks, it's Thursday, just a couple of hours before the data comes out today, and we've got US jobless claims, as usual. Expected to be a little bit higher, who knows? Sometimes these numbers are higher than expected, but it has the opposite effect on the market, sometimes the other way around, who knows? But pretty much the same, not expected to be anything dramatic here. But I think the interesting number will be the PPI number, and that's expected to have probably dropped somewhat, uh, produce a price index. Consensus is 3% against 4.6. That's uh, for uh, year on year for March and then uh, month on month, no increase. So let's see how that affects the markets. In comparison to CPI yesterday, the combination of jobs and PPI might have a more dramatic effect. Who knows? But let's go and have a look at the charts. And I think, again, it's all about the dollar. We've got markets in sort of flux going up and down. We saw a drop off in the S&P and NASDAQ yesterday. We'll have a look at that shortly. But dollar index, funnily, dollar index moved down at the same time as the markets moved down. So they've kind of gone out of sync for the moment. Dollar index is at a perilously low level. And this support level really needs to hold at around about 100 or just about 100, say 100.7, 100.6, 100.5 maybe in that region is this sort of recent low from 2023. And so far we've held above it. And you can see there's been a lot of fluctuation around about this area, a slowing down of this downward momentum. And the big question is, are we going to get a double bottom here and see the dollar index bounce off here? and move back into higher levels. There are camps on both sides of this argument saying the dollar's doomed and it's heading down. I think way too many people are saying that actually. And there's the other camp saying the dollar's due for a bit of a bounce and we should head up back into at least the top of this range. My feeling is it's kind of 50-50. We might be range bound in the dollar for some time to come. We might have to go back up to 105 and then back down again and so on and so forth. I think ultimately though, we should see the dollar drop lower into perhaps the, the high 90s, maybe even as low as 90, somewhere around there, into these levels of 2021 20, and prior. So we're still at a pretty high level on the dollar index, but we've had a pretty sharp move down overall weakness in the dollar. I'm not too sure if that's going to be sustainable considering all the factors affecting the market overall in terms of the economy and in terms of inflation and so on. And whether we're going to see oil prices and gas prices and everything affecting the dollar and the dollar affecting them. I don't know. It's all very, very mixed up. And actually, having spoken to quite a lot of traders who, who trade funds and uh, trade for institutions and banks, a lot of people are saying this is one of the most difficult trading periods they've encountered during this year. And you'll see why, particularly for those who are trading stock indices and stocks, individual names and so on. That aside, let's have a look at what's going on with the major currencies, the euro and the pound, both approaching pretty important levels. This is the euro. You can see we had a high here at just about where we are now in February, the beginning of February, actually, towards the end of January, beginning of February, a sharp rejection from this 1.10 4.0 level, thereabouts. Very sharp rejection last time we got there and a dip down, a nice curve bottom and a gradual easing back into this level where we are at the moment. Very much like the dollar index, as the euro makes up the bulk of the dollar index, are we going to see a double top? If we have a look at the longer term chart on euro, you can see that this level that we're at now is a pretty pivotal area going back a long time into 2015 and 16. And then again in 2019 and 20, this area here, where we are at the at the moment. So are we going to see the euro pushing up higher or are we going to see the inflationary problems, the, the economic problems in Europe push the euro lower? We do have news, however, that the ECB is considering raising rates again, whereas the US might pause and they might actually even raise more aggressively. So that will have a positive effect on the euro if that's the case. So having said all of that, we're at a very key level, just above 1.1 where we are at the moment. And if you have a look at it like that, it looks like the perfect place for a double top and for the euro to move back down into perhaps 1.05 and maybe even lower down towards this 200 day moving average, which is now curling up. We might at least get a retracement back to these two moving averages, the 50 day and the 100 day, which are now sort of zoned in on 1.07. We might have to get a, a test of the bottom of this range or slightly lower. I don't know. We might have to wait for the jobs and the PPI number to come out. And then of course, we've got the Fed interest rate decision coming up in a couple of weeks. And that's going to affect all of the markets, of course. Same thing with the pound. We've just broken up above pretty key resistance a few days ago on the pound and above this green line here. We're moving actually into another area of resistance. So we can't rule out 
the possibility of the pound getting rejected from where we are at the moment. As with the euro and the dollar index, it's an area of enormous traffic where we are currently going back into the same periods, 2019, 2020, even back as far as 2018 and 2017. So this area right now is kind of the dividing line in the last five, six, seven years between the bulls and the bears. And we did see the pound break down dramatically in September last year when everyone thought that the pound was going to go to parity with the dollar. Of course, it bounced back dramatically from there and has now moved back into the same area. So are we going to see the pound moving higher up into 1.25, 1.3? Or are we going to see the pound having to take a pause and a breather in this area here? You can see the levels are not well defined. So don't try and draw precise lines around this area. You can see it's just a zone and uh, we're just into that zone at the moment and we have been for a week or so and interestingly we've also got an expanding pattern what i like to call a foghorn or a megaphone potentially with lower lows but now higher highs so it's an expanding pattern the trend line on the upside is potentially something like that and the trend line on the downside is something like that so that's not perfectly drawn but you get the idea it's a kind of a megaphone expanding pattern and what you can often see with these is a test of the top side of this and if we kind of spread this out something akin to the bottom line you could see that there's perhaps potential for the pound to move up into the 1.26 to 1.27 region so that's the great british pound we can look at perhaps the other interesting currency is the us dollar canadian dollar we're short on this one we're actually short on the euro as well but that one may not work out this one is working out however but on the us dollar cad we've now banked some profits on this move down but we have now reached the 200 day moving average and potential support coming in at these lows Having said that, we have bounced off this trend line going back to June last year, bounced off it, retested it and failed the retest and now we've fallen down beneath it. So there's room for this one to move down to next support, which is at around 1.3250 or 60, somewhere in that region where these previous lows are. And I expect that's probably where we'll get if this 200 period moving average doesn't form a barrier and prevent us from moving lower. But target for this should probably be 1.3250, 60 or 70 if we continue to move down. So that's the US dollar CAD. Looking at the yen pairs, I think the dollar yen, we've moved up into this red line, which is a sort of the first resistance line. I did a video on this a couple of days ago, but you can see we've got this sort of lopsided potential head and shoulders pattern meeting the 200 day moving average. So there's potential for this to move up into the 137, 137, 20 region. But we've got this first barrier here, which may provide resistance. And overall, I think we're going to see the yen pairs move down at some stage as inflation in Japan remains a concern and they continue to make room for rate hikes to move their interest rates above negative 0.1%, which is where it is at the moment. So often these yen pairs move in dramatic and unexpected manners, as you can see looking back over time. And in fact, since November last year, We've seen this sort of staggered move, dramatic move down, pause, dramatic move down, and pause and so on quite often. And now we're just at that point where we could start to see this pattern resume and see these large daily moves down, followed by a pause and then another large daily move down and followed by a pause. Our overall target for this one is around about 120, perhaps just slightly below that. And that's going to affect all of these yen pairs. The one that we're most interested in at the moment is the Euro Japanese yen. And you can see we're moving right back into these highs from September, October last year, as the Euro has shown strength against other currencies. At some stage, we expect this to turn around and begin to move down. We expect the Euro yen to eventually move down into the high 120s, which is quite a long way below us. We're at in the high 140s now almost. But somewhere around here, unless we form a new high and break up above 148, we should see the euro yen begin to move down. And we're looking for a daily reversal candle pattern on this pair to give us confirmation of that. So far, nothing. But as I said, if we do see one of these dramatic moves down on the dollar yen that we've become accustomed to, we should see the euro yen follow suit. Looking at the NASDAQ and S&P, after a 25 to 27 percent rally on Nasdaq, one would expect a bit of a pullback into some of these moving averages. The 200 period moving averages beginning to curl up. I did put a tweet up. If you go and have a look on Twitter, you can see my thoughts on this. There are incredibly conflicting opinions on where we're going on the U.S. stock markets this year. There are all the doomsayers and the naysayers predicting a massive collapse. And then there are those who are saying that we're in for a bit of a boom and a fantastic rally going through towards the middle part and perhaps the end of this year. And you can go and have a look at my Twitter channel. If you're not subscribed to my Twitter channel, go and have a look at that. But there's a little comment I've made on there and a potential path for 
NASDAQ, for example, moving up quite a long way higher from where we are now. We've already moved partially up this path and there is potential for it to go higher. On the other hand, we might have a calamitous collapse from where we are right now. I don't know. I think it's going to be easy to day trade NASDAQ and S&P over the next couple of weeks or months. And that's what we've been doing. We managed to sell S&P yesterday after the CPI data, somewhere near the highs, and we got out somewhere near the lows. How this is going to go today, I don't know. But what I do see on S&P is good resistance above us at 41.20. And for eight or nine days now, we've not managed to break above here. And yesterday, we formed this big spike high wick top with an outside bearish candle, once again, not closing above that level. And this pink zone here where we almost touched and where these previous highs were is the 50% Fibonacci retracement of the entire move down from 2022 until now. Just think of that. S&P has already gained half of the losses that we sustained in the so-called market crash. That's the 50% level right there. And we've been batting up against that level for a long time. What's concerning for market bears is if you look at this larger picture, we're getting higher lows and we're getting higher highs. And in order for this pattern to continue, we should see S&P reach up to at least the next Fibonacci level, which is at about 43.20, and then perhaps even this range top, and then heading up perhaps towards the 78.6% Fib at 45.40. So who knows where this is going to go? I think it's easier to day trade the stock indices at the moment. We've got jobs and PPI coming out a little bit later on today. Will we get a chance to sell against 41.20 again? Maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see how the markets react to that data. And it's probably best just to wait to see what happens when that news comes out and whether we're going to see an increase or decrease in the producer price index, which of course is the precursor to the consumer price index. Let's now have a look at some of the commodities and we'll talk about natural gas last. First of all, Bitcoin. I have a small short position on Bitcoin. Whether this is going to work out or not, I don't know. It's a very bullish pattern, but I think it's a very low risk, high opportunity short. And the reason for it is simply because we've just moved up into this very high congestion traffic zone, which has provided serious support and resistance every time we've been there before, which is only twice, mind you. Well, twice in general but three times in this area here. We spent a lot of time in 2022 in the same region. You can see again, it's not a well-defined level. It's somewhere between 30,000 and 32,000, 32 and a half thousand in this region here. It's not perfectly defined by any particular number, apart from the fact that 30,000 is a big psychological number. And 30,000 something sounds just so much more than 20 something thousand. So there's that to consider. But we might have to see Bitcoin pull back at least to the top of this channel line over here. And uh, it would be a good opportunity for us to exit this short trade if it works out. Otherwise, if we move up quickly and dramatically from where we are now, we're going to have to allow for Bitcoin to get up to 32,000, maybe 34, maybe 35 before we see another correction. So a bit of an iffy trade, but low risk really in the bigger scheme of things. It's a small position that we have on this, looking for a move back down into this range here and a break below the top of this channel line back into the inside of the channel will provide an opportunity for Bitcoin to move back down into perhaps 23, 24, 25,000. So we'll have to see how that goes. Gold is an interesting one. We haven't seen much of a pullback, but in general, I think if you have a look at my previous videos, I'm looking for gold to move up into 2070, 2080 before a pullback. And if you have a look at the previous times we've reached those levels, there has been a scary drop back down to this red line at about $1,900 or so, 1920 perhaps. And that's happened twice now. I think we've got to reach up to 2070 before moving back down again. So if we don't get up there first, look for any dips down to the top of this channel line. You can figure out where that is. That's around about 1950. Perhaps we need to allow for 1920 even a brief dip below 1,900 into 1,800, somewhere around there. If we get to the top here first, then we need to allow for a pullback, something similar perhaps to the previous two occasions, and then a drop back down. But I don't think we're going to get much below $1,900, maybe 1,920. And at some stage, probably gold's going to have to try and break up through 2,070 or 80 and start to move into new high levels that we haven't seen before. So that's the idea with gold, buy into dips, Around these lines, you can have a look and pause the video, put these lines on your chart and you can uh, follow these as the days progress. This one's obviously moving lower, this purple one, the channel top, and this red line is moving sideways. At some time in the future, these two lines will meet. And, and if it takes that long to get there, that will 
form an incredibly strong support level. But that's only in December this year. So if we do get to this level, 1920, 1900, 1920, around about December, that will be a fantastic time to buy gold. Mark that in your calendars. All right, so let's look at natural gas. And uh, well, it's pretty interesting. What we can do is just clean this chart up a wee bit. And I'm going to take this trend line off because even though we've broken it, we're actually just moving sideways. And so that's coming up for a month already that we've been stuck between uh, $2.22 and $2 roughly back into that area where we were previously in February. And every time we've touched the top, we've fallen back. We haven't closed above the 20 period moving average on the daily chart. And that's really important because this 20 period moving average provides a really good indicator of whether we're bullish or bearish on natural gas. And it's a 20 day simple moving average and uh, just put that on your charts. And if we're below there, we're definitely bearish. If we're above there, we're definitely bullish. However, having said that, at some stage after this consolidation and coiling period, we're bound to see a move one way or the other quite dramatically. And we've been there for long enough now. And this is the sort of period that natural gas consolidates for before the next dramatic move. You can see looking back there into February, about the same length of time before a fairly strong move down. So after that last rally up to the 20 day moving average and the top of this channel, we just dropped back down again. We formed a sort of a doji candle. Yesterday, we just moved down from there and we're just hovering around this 2.08 level, $2.08, which is the low here from these previous candles. So just above some of these important bodies, apart from these couple of dips below there, that's a pretty good level. If we can hold above there today, that would be really good, but I don't expect that we will. Don't hold out any hope one way or another for this to hold where we are at the moment. And there's an equal chance we could go back to test just below $2 or back up to $2.22. My position remains the same on natural gas. I'm long from $2 on the dot and I'm willing to add to $1.80 and $1.50 just below us for a move up through these levels and up eventually into $3.40, $50, dollars or $75. My current position is a smaller position than I would like and I'd prefer actually for the price to move down a little bit lower to these levels below us so I can pick up some more size. If not, then I'll just have to go with the size that I've currently got on. I'm not gonna give financial or trading advice on this, but if I was not in a position right now, I might consider perhaps taking a very, very tiny position where we are at the moment at $2.08, adding to $2 to form a, a sort of a partial position, and then looking to add at $1.80 and $1.50. The other way you could play this is simply to wait for a break and a confirmation above these resistance levels. And what I mean is we're looking for reversal candles, a move up, a back test from the top, a hold, and a continuation of those moves up through this next resistance level here at around $2.40, and then up through around $2.60, and then the big number, $3, which is going to take some effort to get through, and eventually up to $3.40, 50, 60, or 75. Take note of where these moving averages are. It's very interesting. The 20 day moving average is forming the barrier along with this yellow zone. The 50 day moving average is right in the middle of the next resistance zone. Then we've got a fairly clear resistance zone in terms of moving averages. Then we've got the big $3 resistance level formed by this dramatic reversal here and a little gap on the chart. And you can see there's some gaps in this area too, which might need to be filled at some stage in the near future. But in order to get up into this pink zone, we've got to get through this big barrier. And then look with 100 day moving averages as falling into this pink target area. So these moving averages are beginning to line up nicely with the areas that we've got to get through. You can see there's a lot of traffic above us. It's not going to be easy for natural gas to get here, apart from perhaps some dramatic news or a sudden short squeeze or change in weather or some geopolitical event or whatever it might be. It's not going to be easy for us to get up through these levels directly above us if we continue just to sort of meander around. We really need a, a sudden, sharp and uh, powerful move to push up through some of this overhead resistance and traffic. When we get up into $3.50, 60 75 somewhere around there, expect there will be an enormous amount of short covering, as there probably will be at around about the $3 area. But let's not worry about that for now. First thing is we've got to deal with this area that we're in at the moment, and it's pretty well defined. That's the nice thing about the natural gas chart at the moment is that the levels are pretty clear, and we know where we stand in terms of the technicals on the chart. We do know that this yellow area is where we're trapped, and where the levels that define escaping from this trap are. We know where the supports below us are, where I'm looking to add further size into this long position for an ultimate and challenging journey up through these green resistance levels into the pink 
target zone at 350, 60 or 75. Well, this has been quite a long video, so I don't want to go too much into anything else. But just a very quick note on US oil. Depends on whether you're bullish or bearish in oil. I think that we're going to struggle to get through this level at 83, 84, 85. The 200 day moving average is just curling downwards. It's bearish in direction. We've just touched it and this green line represents resistance. I'm tempted to sell US oil into this area that we're at now, up into the 85, 86, 87 level, somewhere in that zone for a move back down into the 70s and perhaps the high 60s. Well, I hope you found all that useful. And if you did, please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Good luck.